A self-driving car is speeding down a busy street when its sensors detect an unavoidable collision. In 0.3 seconds, it must choose, hit a child who ran into the road, or swerve into a family of four on the sidewalk. The car's AI makes its decision in milliseconds. Someone dies, but who's responsible? The programmer, the car company, or the machine itself. This isn't science fiction. Right now, thousands of fully driverless vehicles operate in limited US pilots, with California logging over 9 million autonomous test miles in a recent year. Their AI systems are being trained to make exactly these kinds of life and death decisions. When a human driver causes a fatal accident, we have centuries of legal precedent. But when an algorithm kills someone, our entire justice system breaks down. Today, we'll explore what happens when we give machines the power to decide who lives and dies. The ethical dilemma facing self-driving cars isn't new. It's a digital version of the famous trolley problem that philosophers have debated for decades. In the classic scenario, a runaway trolley is heading toward five people tied to the tracks. You can pull a lever to divert it to another track where it will kill one person instead. Do you actively cause one death to prevent five? Self-driving cars face these impossible choices constantly, but with a crucial difference. They must be programmed in advance to make these decisions. Every line of code represents a moral judgment about whose life matters more. Consider the real-world complexity. Should the car prioritize passengers over pedestrians, young people over old, one person over many? These aren't abstract philosophical questions. They're programming decisions being made right now in Silicon Valley boardrooms. Mercedes-Benz sparked controversy in 2016 when reports claimed their cars would prioritize passenger safety over pedestrians in unavoidable accidents. Mercedes later clarified, it doesn't program sacrifice trade-offs and focuses on avoiding crashes altogether. But critics argued this still creates a two-tiered system where wealthy car owners are protected at the expense of everyone else. The MIT Moral Machine Experiment surveyed millions of people worldwide about these dilemmas, revealing cultural differences in moral priorities. Public preferences differ by regional clusters. For example, some Eastern countries show more willingness to spare older people relative to Western countries, whose values should guide the algorithms that will soon make these decisions for all of us. The most unsettling aspect of algorithmic decision-making isn't just that machines are making moral choices, it's that they are making them based on data patterns and statistical optimization rather than human ethical reasoning. Take the case of Elaine Hertzberg, killed by an Uber self-driving car in Arizona in 2018. The NTSB found that Uber's system first detected Hertzberg 5.6 seconds before impact, misclassified her multiple times as an unknown object, then a vehicle, then a bicycle, and finally as a person, but by then it was too late. The system had also disabled emergency braking for testing, relying on the human safety driver to intervene. While autonomous vehicle deployments have expanded, ADS-involved deaths remain a tiny fraction of U.S. road fatalities. Federal reports show dozens of ADS-related fatalities over multiple years, not the thousands that would represent significant percentages of America's roughly 40,000 annual road deaths. The AI didn't make a conscious moral choice to kill Hertzberg. Instead, it followed programming that prioritized smooth traffic flow over pedestrian safety, itself a moral choice made by engineers who never expected to be held accountable. This reveals a fundamental problem. Moral choices are hidden in technical specifications and training data. Data. Studies show pedestrian detection is less reliable for darker skin tones and for children, revealing real-world fairness risks built into these systems. The Hertzberg case exposed the legal vacuum surrounding AI responsibility. Prosecutors declined to charge Uber in 2019. The safety driver later pled guilty to endangerment in 2024, highlighting how current law targets humans around the loop, not the algorithm itself. When a self-driving car kills someone, determining legal responsibility becomes a nightmare that exposes fundamental flaws in our justice system. Traditional criminal law assumes human agency. Someone made a conscious decision that led to harm, but algorithmic decisions emerge from complex interactions between code, data, and machine learning processes that no single person fully controls. Consider the chain of responsibility. The AI system was designed by one team, trained on data collected by another, tested by a third group, and deployed by executives who may not understand the technical details. The car's sensors were manufactured by different companies, its maps created by yet another organization, and its software updated automatically without human oversight. When the inevitable accident occurs, who bears criminal responsibility? The programmer who wrote the algorithm? The data scientist who selected the training examples? The executive who approved deployment? Or 
the AI system itself. Some countries are developing new frameworks to address this chaos. UK law shifts primary crash compensation to insurers when an automated vehicle is driving, with recovery from manufacturers later. The EU passed a new product liability directive in December 2024, expanding liability to software and post-sale updates member states must implement by 2026. Some jurisdictions effectively decouple victim compensation from fault at the scene. Insurers pay first, fight liability later. This pragmatic approach helps victims while the law catches up to technology. But this approach essentially socializes the costs of algorithmic decision-making while privatizing the profits, allowing tech companies to deploy potentially dangerous AI systems without bearing full consequences. The result is a legal black hole where no one is truly accountable for algorithmic decisions that kill people. Perhaps the most profound challenge isn't technical, it's philosophical. We're being forced to encode human moral values into mathematical algorithms, making explicit the ethical assumptions that usually remain hidden in human decision-making. This process reveals uncomfortable truths about how we value human life. U.S. regulators price risk reductions using a statistical life, about $13.7 million in 2024 guidance. Should self-driving cars use these same calculations? Should they factor in age, health, or economic productivity when choosing who to save? Germany's Ethics Commission established clear guidelines in 2017. In unavoidable crashes, no decisions based on personal features like age or gender, and no offsetting victims, human life has top priority. The European Union has proposed that autonomous vehicles should never be programmed to make explicit trade-offs between human lives. Some scholars argue for randomization in true dilemmas to avoid discriminatory rules, though others say real AV design should avoid trolley-style setups entirely by focusing on accident prevention. The most troubling possibility is that these moral choices will be made not by ethicists or elected representatives, but by tech companies optimizing for profit and legal protection. If self-driving cars become widespread, a handful of Silicon Valley engineers will effectively become the moral legislators for millions of life and death decisions. The rise of self-driving cars forces us to confront uncomfortable questions about justice, morality, and human agency that we've never had to answer before. We're creating a world where life and death decisions are made by algorithms programmed by engineers who may never face the consequences of their choices. This isn't just about transportation. It's about the future of moral responsibility in an age of artificial intelligence. The legal and ethical frameworks we develop for autonomous vehicles will set precedents for how society handles AI responsibility across all areas of life. The answers we choose today will determine whether artificial intelligence becomes a tool for human flourishing or a system that reduces moral decision-making to cold mathematical optimization. The stakes couldn't be higher, literally life and death.